All right. He's not here. Okay. We'll try to reach out to him right now. Thank you. All right. Moving on uh, to the consent agenda. Any changes, additions, deletions? I move that we accept the consent agenda as presented. Oh, second. I'll second. All those in favor of the consent of the member, say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Those opposed? Hearing none, motion passes. Action agenda. Resolution of the Warren County School Board regarding closed meetings for the purpose of interviewing candidates for the position of superintendent. Uh, the purpose of this resolution for the Warren County School Board regarding closed meetings for the purpose of interviewing candidates for the position of superintendent goes with the Code of Virginia 2.2. 3712 closed meeting procedure certifications and proceedings. Um, let me read the uh, resolution and then we can move forward. Resolution of the Warren County School Board regarding closed meetings for the purpose of interviewing candidates for the position of superintendent. Whereas the position of division superintendent became vacant on December 31st, 2019, due to the retirement of L. Gregory Drescher, and whereas the Warren County School Board has advertised for and received applications for this position and does now desire to conduct personal interviews with select candidates. And whereas section 2.2-3712 of the Code of Virginia provides procedures for public bodies to conduct closed meetings and whereas paragraph B of this section states, the notice provisions of this chapter shall not apply to closed meetings of any public body held solely for the purpose of interviewing candidates for the position of chief administrative officer. Prior to, prior to any such closed meeting for the purpose of interviewing candidates, the public body shall announce in an open meeting that such closed meetings shall be held at disclosed or undisclosed locations within 15 days thereafter. Now therefore, be it resolved that Warren County School Board does publicly declare its intent to hold closed meetings for the sole purpose of interviewing candidates for the position of superintendent of Warren County Public Schools. This de declaration shall be effective for 14 days beginning Monday, May 25th, 2020. Discussion from members, motions? Make a motion. I move that the proposed resolution of the Warren County School Board regarding closed meetings for the purpose of interviewing candidates for the position of superintendent be adopted as presented. I'll second. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Hearing none, motion passes. Thank you all. VPI uh, teacher and instructional assistant positions. Mr. Hirsch. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, Madam Superintendent. Um, we're requesting an additional teacher and instructional assistant to support the increase of uh, the Virginia Preschool Initiative slots awarded by the Department of Ed. Um, that's a four-year-old programs uh, that meet, you know, uh, either uh, social economic status uh, requirements, disability requirements, and other things. Uh, this will allow us to serve 130 students versus the 92 we're currently serving. We're now able to serve. This will generate income from DOE of $114,000. Um, that will more than cover the cost for the teacher and instructional assistant salaries and benefits, which totals $94,491. Um, in your attachments, uh, you have the salary and benefits uh, of each of those positions. It'll cost nothing locally for us to do that, and it'll be able to allow us to further um, provide early interventions for um, for students in a variety of uh, subcategories. Any questions? Mr. Hirsch, do we have a yeah. waiting list currently? I know we were full. Do we Are we able to fill those pretty easily? What's a, the, may become available? Uh, absolutely, uh, Mr. Chairman. Um, we're looking at opening up another classroom. Um, we're currently looking at uh, a variety of elementary schools. We currently um, have you know, multiple classrooms in our elementary schools and one at Skyline High School, which serves as a, serves as a laboratory for our um, early childhood program high school students at Skyline. So we're looking at a variety of options. Um, and we're confident, you know, we have the room for that. So yeah, we can fill it. Um, in addition, um, further down the road, closer to the start of the new school year, um, we're waiting on uh, some answers from uh, Head Start. Uh, we're looking at, hopefully, uh, a grant for early heads to add another program for at-risk careers. 
Um, and, and that will really be a, a feather in our hat to, to promote early intervention for our kids. But yes, Mr. Chairman, we do have room and we are ready to go. Okay, thank you. Any other questions for Mr. Hirsch? Hearing none. I move that Warren County Public Schools hire an additional teacher and instructional assistant to support the increase in the VPI, uh, VPI slots for the four-year-old program to be paid using the VDOE grant. I was, I was just trying to find the explanation of what VPI was. So, Virginia Preschool Pre 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 Initiative. Okay. Yeah. Virginia Preschool Initiative. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries. Mr. Hirsch, I'll add one thing, and it's kind of for all of us. We know what a lot of the abbreviations mean and the initials, but can we print what Virginia Preschool Initiative and then just later on have it in parentheses of VPI, just so it doesn't confuse people like myself trying to figure out what it was at the beginning? Absolutely, Mr. Chairman, I apologize. No, no, no apology. And for those of us that went to West Virginia University, you have a tough time saying VPI, <laughs> choking a little bit. Yeah, very true. <laughs> maybe, we can, maybe we can say the whole thing. <laughs> okay, motion carries. Uh, next up, uh, AS Roads Elementary School renovations, upgraded electrical service. Mr. Livesey. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Uh, as most of you know, part of the renovation design that uh, AS Road Elementary does include the upgraded electrical service. Uh, and that's going to be supporting the new heating, ventilation, and air conditioning systems, along with uh, other building related systems. Uh, this new service is going to require a larger transformer, additional utility pole, and, of course, the necessary underground wiring between the pole and the transformer. Uh, this work can only be accomplished by the utility provider, Front Royal Electric, uh, and therefore was not included in Lance Construction's base bid as part of the renovations. Uh, we're looking at an estimated installation of this uh, to occur in early June to allow Lance Construction's electrical subcontractor uh, to maintain their schedule for bringing the new service into the building itself. Uh, the cost for this provided by Front Royal Electric is $17,859.54. Uh, again, this was not included in Lance Construction's base bid, so I uh, wanted to make the board aware of this and uh, ask for authorization to allow the interim superintendent to uh, sign and approve the upgrade documents with Front Royal Electric. Any questions? Where are the funds coming from? Are they so the funds are available in the construction fund, absolutely. Okay. And this is something that we've done with all of our large renovation or new school mm -hmm. construction projects. We have to purchase the equipment for the energy electricity. So it was service. anticipated in the news. Okay. Yes. Any, any other questions from Mr. Livesey? Do we have a motion? I move that the school board approve and provide authorization for the interim superintendent to sign the upgrade agreement with the Front Royal Electric Company. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. Mr. Chair, Mr. Rinaldi is um, attending now. Okay, thank you. Good evening, Mr. Rinaldi. All right, next up is approval to donate a 2003 international bus to Warren County Sheriff's Office. Mr. Mitchell. Yes, uh, we have a 2000 international school bus that has passed its service life and was removed from fleet. Uh, the floor needs to be replaced and the cost makes the replacement of the floor no longer financially viable for us. Um, this vehicle is parked and set aside for disposal. The Sheriff's Office is in need of a vehicle that they can convert into a command unit. Um, the recommendation uh, or the vehicle also needed air AC condensers uh, that again were about $5,000 a piece. So again, just not financially viable for us to try to maintain this vehicle. Um, we've been uh, trying to assist them along the way and slowly renovating this vehicle to, to meet the needs. And we're looking forward to 
seeing that serve in the community and being out there, uh, a huge cost savings to them. I think they're probably going to have less than ten thousand dollars in this vehicle versus the hundred and twenty-five to hundred thirty thousand that they would have if they went and bought one. So we're hoping that you'll bless that and let them have our old two thousand three school bus. That sounds like win-win. It helps them out if it gets rid of it off of our property. Well, because at this point, you know, with the ones that we have that were taken out of service, we're, we'll put out uh, an RFP, but the reality of it is uh, we'll be probably paying people to remove them mm -hmm. because they're just, they have no value. Just, and I think I, I heard you mention it there. Are we doing any of the renovation or yes. will they yes. take it to the, a, the, another? We, we have an agreement with the sheriff's office, the new sheriff, that we do 100% of their work. Right. And um, they seem very pleased with what we do. Um, the project's coming along. You should come by and see it. It's going to be a, a beautiful community. Good deal. Anything else for Mr. Mitchell? Hearing nothing, do we have a motion? I move the two that the 2003 International School Bus Unit, number 64, be donated to the Warren County Sheriff's Office. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. Thank you all very much. Thank you, sir. Uh, 2020 graduation ceremony, Ms. Shepard. Thank you. On Tuesday, May the 20th, a survey was sent to all of our high school seniors at both Scallon High School and Warren County High School. The survey detailed two types of graduation ceremonies being considered for the class of 2020. The survey asked the high school seniors to weigh in on which ceremony they preferred, and the two choices were individual graduation ceremony, which would have been the first part of June, and the second choice was a traditional graduation ceremony with a contingency plan if we're not able to do that, and that would be the first weekend in August. We realized that our seniors did not have the last quarter or the last part of their senior year that they expected, and we wanted to give them the opportunity to weigh in on how they wanted to celebrate the culmination of their 13 years in high school. And it was a lot of hard work to get them there with both the students and the family. So we wanted to, to be able to celebrate that in the way in which they decided. So we received, we allowed the survey to be open until Sunday, May the 17th. We received almost 50% Almost 50% of the senior class responded, and we received a little over 200 responses. 114 responses were from Skyline High School, 90 responses were from Warren County High School, 70% of the students voted that they would like to have a traditional graduation in August with a contingency plan in place if we're not able to do that. The contingency plan would be similar to the first option? Similar to the individual graduation ceremony. So we have been working on a plan that would allow our students and our, our visitors to be safe and to social distance and, and items like that. So we are, we are working on that um, at this time to make sure that, that everybody who would attend that ceremony would be safe. We had 180 students um, said that they would participate in graduation, 22 said maybe, and then only two students who uh, responded to the survey said that they would not participate in graduation. So, okay. let me see if there's, yeah. So, um, I meet with the graduation committee tomorrow, so we will continue our planning for the graduation ceremony um, tomorrow. Any idea of when we may hear something from the state? So, about school. Yeah, so I am anticipating the first part of June. I've heard okay. June, the dates June 4th and June 5th. Okay. I know the governor had a, a um, back to school task force mm -hmm. and they started mid, uh, mid to end of April. So I believe that they're going to release some information the first part of June. I talked to the health department today and they said they would know more come June 1. Okay. So, all right. So, I guess ours all is June 4th, 5th. Yeah, so, probably all tied together. Mm -hmm. Mr. Well, Wells, a lot of stuff, uh, Virginia Department of Health and things like that, a lot of things seem to be uh, uh, circulating around that June 1st okay. uh, time frame. Mm -hmm. All right, so two weeks, we'll 
Right. So I'm looking forward to receiving that information yes. so that we can, we've been planning multiple scenarios about the return to school, but it would be nice to be able to narrow it down to two instead of six. Yes, so <laughs> that's, that's where we're at with that. Okay, thank you. At, at this point, um, the graduation, is there a, I don't want to call it a drop dead, but is there a, a, a finalizing date where we would have to say no we can't we can't do a live graduation we're going to have to do the backup so we will discuss that tomorrow okay. but our intention is to use both the visitor side of the bleachers and the home side of the bleachers uh, allow each of the students to have four visitors uh, in case of their step parents or or you know larger families and then um, they would we would set four seats together and then have a six seat uh, six foot space and then for, sit four more visitors together and have a six foot space, skip a, a row of bleachers and then have another scenario like that. So across both home and visitors, we um, most of the time the graduates are sitting facing the home side, we would have them facing one set of uh, field goals and then we would have the uh, teachers facing the other set so that both the visitor side and the home bleachers would be able to see the students. So, um, and the students would be setting on the field at six foot increments as well. So we would have one way to come into the, into the stadium and you would work your way around the, to leave, to exit, you would work your way around and, and exit the other way. Our intention is to have our town police and our sheriff's office be partners in this with us. So we're hoping that they'll be they'll be willing to um, participate and help us with crowd control. So I imagine they um, we have not reached out to them, but we're hoping that that will be that will be the case. Are you talking about having the two high schools on different days? I mean, it's going to be really hot in August, even yes. early morning, yes. and the first day in the morning, and we'll probably have to have a rain date as well, just in case. So you know. Warren County High School may be Friday and Saturday, Skyland High School may be Sunday and Monday, but we, you know, we are working through those details mm -hmm. starting tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. Thanks for all you're doing. I know this has been really confusing. <laughs> so much information. And it changes constantly. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, if you have any questions, we will let parents know. I wanted to share the information with you. We will let parents and, and faculty know the you know the results mm -hmm. of the survey tomorrow, so that they're they're prepared for this this type of graduation ceremony. Yeah. I think it would be nice if we could do it in person. I really do. That would be nice for families and friends. And, and that's our, our seniors were very yeah. clear that that's what they wanted. So. Yeah. All right. Anything else for Ms. Shepard on that topic? Hearing none. Anything else before this board? So I would like to give an update on the hiring. Okay. We have had 90% of our, our employees return their um, contracts. If you will remember a few, probably a month ago, the school board approved Talent Ed, which is yes. a contract, electronic contract program and 90% of our employees have returned their contracts at this time which is you know which is a great return rate at this they were released Friday last week. Yeah. When are they due? 15 days after Friday. Okay. And then we have had 24 instructional position um, employees resign and seven retirees. So we're that's 31 at this at this time. We have filled all of our positions except four or five, and we have five vacancies to fill. And we've had a couple instructional assistants move up to be teachers now? Yes. So that's, that's yes. really nice. Mm -hmm. Really yeah. nice. Yep. Yeah. Um, Mr. Smith does a nice job identifying those, teach, <laughs> uh, those instructional assistants who have the coursework that are able to do that. I believe, going back to the electronic part of it, that Mr. Smith had told me that 24 hours later we had 50% of them returned. Mm -hmm. That's correct. Now that's, to me, phenomenal. It is. I mean, that, that number is just unbelievable. So so I think that was the right move on the board's part to, to have this process. Agreed. And if you're an employee, you can actually log in. If you've lost your contract, you can log in, and, and there it is that for is. you to reprint. So. That's nice. Well, oh, good. Okay. Works for, for everyone. And then just one other update. We have... 
I think at the last school board meeting, the school board approved the um, uh, the purchase of an online enrollment program. Yes. And that program will be up and running uh, June the 1st. So we will be doing online registration for our kindergarten students starting June the 1st. Mm -hmm. And we have ordered banners and um, yard signs so that we can advertise that as well. So there will be a banner over John Marshall Highway and Royal um, South, South, Royal. South Royal Avenue. Now, is that just for kindergarten students or new that's, students? That's for any new students, kindergarten students and any new student. Yes. So that's that's exciting as well. The um, the two ladies, the two ladies that are working on the program have worked, have done a phenomenal job getting the program ready for our our families to enroll their students. Good. So they can do that virtually or virtually, or they they'll be able there'll be a date later that they can do it in person. Okay. Anything yeah. else, Ms. Shepard? That's it. That's it. <laughs> Mr. Wells? Uh, just uh, to thank the Board of Supervisors for the, allowing us the funding to uh, completely do the AS Roads project without any debt service any, right. and, and get it done. Um, that's great partnership as, as we always see with the Board. Nice to have a, a new school with no debt. That's, right. that's, that's phenomenal. So, I agree. Thank you, Mr. Wells. Ms. Bauer, anything? Nothing. Dr. Pence, you have anything to this evening? Nothing, thank you. You bet. Mr. Rinaldi. Oh, sorry I was late, guys. Uh, got a little senior moment there, I think. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. We, we have those. Um, I, I am at, uh, planning to attend our um, meeting uh, for interviews on the 30th. Okay. So I will be there for that and I'll reintroduce myself to everybody. Okay, thank you. Oh, you're welcome. All right. <laughs> Hearing nothing else, school board meeting is adjourned. <laughs>